Welcome to Conversations. Question, what comes to mind when you think of the word Juve? Is it a vibe? Is it a time? Is it a period? Well, we're actually going to have our horizons broadened a bit with a conversation with Tony Hall, playwright, lecturer, educator, and so many other things more. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Speaking about Juve, what is your... A big topic. Is a, what, is, what, is, what is your earliest Juve memory? Um... Yeah. Juve was, <clears throat> for us, for myself and my brother, Sprang, Juve was a pilgrimage, almost like a religious pilgrimage. My earliest recollection is um, being woken up at four o'clock in the morning and um, uh, encouraged to put on clothes and whatever and to take the trek, as we lived in San Fernando, to take the trek up Drayton Street onto Coffee Street. And f as you're going up Coffee Street, you can see steel bands going, as you're going up Drayton Street, you can see steel bands going down Coffee Street. And uh, the steel band that I remember was um, Guinness Cavaliers. Guinness Cavaliers, apparently, if I remember rightly, had won the panorama that year. The pans were black, and there were golden harps painted onto the pans because the um, their their sponsor was Guinness, so they were known as Guinness Cavaliers. Um, there was no canopy, and they were just playing. And um, and and that was Bobby Mohammed's band, and Bobby Mohammed, whom I I knew. I mean, I was a little boy, I knew him as a elder to me, um, as a, as a piano player, as a as a as a. It's a visionary. He was also a saga boy. <laughs> kind of Elvis Presley here, do. But he created the, the, the notion of a panorama piece. And the, and the panorama piece, the 10 minutes of music, is, is to me, I see it as, a, as an indigenous form. A form that, um, that you could use to, to make plays, you could use to make films. And I challenge young filmmakers and young playwrights to, to study the form, all the, the things that happen in the form. So all of that comes to mind when you talk about first recollection of Juve. But the, 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 the Juve, um, if I were to describe my experiences of Juve growing up in South Lando, is so varied. So, I mean, um, I call my theater company Lord Street Theater Company, and Lord Street, as you know, is a street that connects Mukarapo Street and the Coffee Coffee Street in San Fernando. And that's a kind of a hill, and if you come down Coffee Street and you look down Lord Street, it's it's like an amphitheater. So you, I mean, you can you can be on the stage up on Coffee Street, or you can be on the stage down on Mukarapo Street, looking up. So and and there was there were bleachers on the side of the the, the pavement there on Coffee Street on the Lord Street. I don't know if they're still there outside of a bar that was called Vietnam. <laughs> and so from early in my life, it, it looked like a theater, that whole coffee, that Lord Street area. So all of that is part of my, my Juve, Juve experience, yeah. The fact that you grew up in San Fernando, does, do, you feel, do you feel that that is a distinct experience from a Juve in Port of Spain? Well, or? I don't know. I mean, I didn't experience Juve in Portsmouth until many years later. I was an adult. Um, but it seems to me that, that Juve is more fundamental than where you are. Um, Juve has to do with recognizing that particular moment when it is neither night nor day which suggests change, which suggests transition. But if you think about it, the, the, that moment exists all the time everywhere, right? If you're outside now and it's midday, yes, it means that where you are, that is how the sun is dealing with where you are. But somewhere else is juve, in other words, somewhere else is in transition. So it means, it means you're, all, you're always in transition. So can you lock down juve to a definition if you wanted to give somebody... No, I, th I think that would be a terrible thing. I think to, to, to define, to try to define it is, is a kind of madness. Um, the thinking that, that forces you to want to define it, right? is an act of fascism. 
Yes, it's an act of wanting to control it, and it will not be controlled. So that, so that it's 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 just it's just juve, and it's not a thought, it's not a concept. You know what I mean? It's just it's just the earth and the sun. You know, and 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 we are so we normally are so preoccupied with with our thoughts that um, we miss it, and you could miss it juve morning. Yes, you did not not because you are. On, on, on Frederick Street Juve morning at the right time when that situation is very clear, you're going to get it because you could be preoccupied fighting with your girlfriend or something, you know? <laughs> no, you, you describe Juve as a magic limbo between mm-hmm. night and day. Mm-hmm. And you've also... Between darkness and light, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you've also looked at the fact that trying to lock down Juve to... Uh, a definition. A definite. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. so I, I don't know why you want to define it. You no, see. I, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. Say and when I say you, I don't mean just you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Yeah. So, so why name an institute the Juve Institute? Oh, that, that's a good question. In 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 that saying the Juve Institute, and and that's a kind of a joke anyway. Right? The people take it seriously. I mean, the whole you know my whole musing on Juve on one level is a total hoax anyway. I mean, on one level is totally meaningless, but. The, it's, it's to remind us, you know, you know, you know what happened. I studied theater, yes, the degree and all that confusion. And there are all these guys with theories. You know, you study Stanislavski, and you read what Stanislavski, and then you read Brecht, and then and then there are all kinds of people theorizing on Shakespeare, and then you read Peter Brook saying this thing, and then you you go to Africa, you read Soyinka and so on. You you know, and and the one day just hit me. These guys are just making up stuff. And, and saying it, and, and you know, and you read it in the book, and you learn in university, and, 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 and people follow this one and follow that one, and so on. So it just hit me with this whole Juve thing. I, I could make up something too. So it was a kind of a joke, you know. <laughs> okay, I did Juve, a Juve process, Jamet consciousness, right? And it's a kind of a joke because we could make up things too. And I set it down because the, those things then became guides to help me, references for me for what I, what I was doing, but it's just, just pertaining to what I was doing. Um, and then people start calling me to teach university and stuff, and and and, and um, I stopped teaching what other people taught me at university. I got tired of that because that's how I started. You know, I, I remember when I first started teaching university in Canada, I would close the studio door, lock the studio door, and and work with the students because it was my teacher who had hired me, and I didn't want him to come in the studio and see me doing what he taught me and me doing it badly. So I said, I I locked. The day I knew I had arrived, though, was when I didn't lock the door anymore. But since 1990, anytime anybody called me to teach anything, I would teach Juve. I would, I would, I would, you know, unashamedly, whether it was on the Isle of Wight or in Leeds or in Prague or in Zurich, wherever I was, um, or Brazil, I would teach, I would, I would just talk about Juve and Trinidad and that's what I knew here. But I would try to pull out essences, fundamental, things that seem like fundamental um, constructs and say, okay, this is the fundamental construct that I pull out here. You in Bahia, you know what goes on in Bahia. I have no idea. How does this construct relate to what you are doing in Bahia? How does this construct relate to, to what you, this parade that you do in Prague? Yes? Because... I had taken a workshop from a guy uh, from Nicaragua once and it was a dance workshop and I'm not a dancer but he was able in in showing us dance and showing us movement and gesture and so on to tell the whole story of Nicaragua, the mosquito Indians in Nicaragua, black people in uh, blue fields in Nicaragua. Just by just by dancing. So while he's demonstrating these dances, he's 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 giving a narrative. And I said, Way aha, uh-huh, that is it. That sounds kinda of like Paulo Freire. And well, you're taking out your experience. There is something there. there the, 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 uh, the, uh, the pedagogy of the oppressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. You smart. Yeah, yeah. You're bringing up some heavy duty. Sh- I don't think I ever talk that kind of stuff on Trinidad TV. But but the idea that the people's expression and the forms that they have created create a foundation on which you can build institutions and your society should sit. And that's a crucial thing for us because we, we, we live and run from uh, institutions that have been imposed. 
Yeah, so there's a constant, um, there's a constant um, conflict in this society between what the people on the ground have created for their own survival, the strategies they've employed and the forms and, and so on that have come out of those strategies and what has been imposed. Yes, there's nothing in the Red House <laughs> that, that, that was created by the people. Yes, the conflict, the, the real conflict between Pan or, or the Pan movement and the government is that. Yes, the only way the government could understand and appreciate Pan is to buy it out or Calypso is to buy it out. Because the structure and the objective of the government is contrary to the structure and objective of the pan movement. And, and we, that is something that we should have assessed in 1962 or before, but we never did it. So, so we will never be in the independent until we understand that. The Calypso as the word, the pan as making, as, this is Lloyd Best's formulation, the pan as making something out of nothing. But at the same time, it's the pulse beat, it's the rhythm, it's the syncopation, as Stalin calls it. And then there's the mass, which is the mechanism by which you interrogate and articulate self into the cosmos. Yes? Everything that we do here should be built on that. That's the foundation. But that, those are the institutions or those are the strategies that we have worked out to survive. The reason you are here, I am here, and, 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 and able to function in this way in the world, in the world that is very Euro, um, is because of those... I call them indigenous, indigenous, if you will, um, sort of strategies. But through education, we have been encouraged to sideline them and pay lip service and, and appropriate what we like and, and leave out what we don't like. Um, and, 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 and to some extent, our intellectuals have let us down because they have become career intellectuals. They, they just want to get a job and get whatever you go to university, get um, what they call it, um, tenure or whatever. Um, you know, they, they're not, they're not, um, the rigor of, of, of the responsibility, because it's tough, you know, what, what is needed. Um, they, um, they have, let us know, and I understand that, because maybe I, I am one of those two. You know, moving from that kind of ritualized behavior to authoritative knowledge, and I like the fact authoritative knowledge. Why use that phrase? Authoritative knowledge. That's interesting. So that That's can an interesting with, phrase. Withstand the scrutiny of the academic rigor. Or yeah. the, well, it, 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 academic rigor is a form of nonsense, you know. Academic no, rigor. But we, we, we have in a conversation about nonsense. If you look at your job. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah. From yeah you know, but, but and and when I say nonsense, it's like nonsense, right? Which means which means beyond sense. Yeah. But I want to ask though. Looking at this liminal place that liminal, that's a good way finds good itself word. In, in between the breaking mm -hmm. and juxtaposing that with uh, Rex Nettleford talking about the creative imagination, uh -huh. how does Juve interact with liberation or mo a movement towards kind of self determination? Well, you, 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 who, who is your audience? I mean, you're going into some serious stuff here. Um, uh, one of the things I have been preoccupied with is, for, for whatever reason, it's, ne it's never an organized preoccupation, it just comes up, is constantly dealing with the world as though there is something that we have not been allowed to fit into. And so we constantly articulating a position to be allowed at the table. Yes? And th that never seemed right to me. It seemed to me that, that there's need to articulate the world. And the world that we have been given, the world that your parents hand to you when you're born, is a world that somebody handed to them. Yes? But it's a world that somebody created, in which there's this, there's, there, there, there was, you know, slavery and emancipation and all of that. And I often thought, what would happen if I threw all that out? What would happen if I threw everything out? Yes? Why do I have to do any of this? It seems to me that civilization is a kind of a mistake anyway. If, it, if, it, if, it, if it's going to saddle me, beginning in my location, as an enslaved person. Something wrong with the whole thing. And then worse than that, you get to emancipation and there's no revolution. So what emancipation are you talking about? And when I do the research, I find that the word emancipation in the 19th century meant that somebody led you by the hand. 
that's what emancipation means, that's a 19th century meaning, European mind you, I mean in Buddhism it means something else. Now, it seemed to me in throwing everything out that I had to go back to my own experience and my own experience as a little boy was Juve. Yeah? So, so there I am. There I am, and it's Juve, J-O-U-V-A-Y, not J-O-U-V-E-R-T. That is some French thing that, <laughs> I don't know what that is, the day opens or something. When we talk about J-O-U-V-A-Y, that is a whole um, creation story, you know. You know, Juve Paco Uve, the original Sukunya, who put her skin under the, um, under the mortar and fly away, and she's supposed to get back into that skin before daylight come up, you know. And, and when she comes, she says, Juve, Juve, is daybreak? Is daybreak already? And get back into her skin. She, she, I see her as the original creator, the original creator of our cosmos. And, 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 and the blood sucking that she does, or did, or still doing, is really blood transfusion, really purification, purifying the community. Yeah? And, and she's an old woman. Of course she's an old woman. She's wise and so on. Um, so it's a totally different reading of the Sukuya. So the juve then becomes, in the, in the, you talk about creative imagination, in the creative imagination, juve, the awakening, the community awakening, the, 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 um, the daybreak or whatever, becomes the creation story. This is, this is, this is, this is the first light, yes? Um, and and the, yes, the carnival begins, and the carnival is this magical mystery tour um, that goes on. But it's also the beginning of us. This is this is, and and it was for me. It was important to create that creation, that new dawn, within the context of enslavement. Yes, it's, you you could go back to Africa and say, well, we were kings before and so on, but there's no magic to that. Yes, we could always trace within the Juve all that Africans brought and so on and others. But you know the African thing. I'm sure that original Sukhmia probably was African. She probably was mixed with Carib or something. But the point is, it's a beginning. But it's it's not a beginning that ignores the fact that there is no beginning. Yes, um, but it's a beginning because it takes into consideration the planets and the sun and, and all that. And and it's and it's dawn. You know there was a there was an ex-slave. A runaway slave in America who in the 19th century, I don't remember the name of the book, but he says for the slave, um, there is no dawn, it is always night, yes. And I thought when I found that quote, it's a quote that I use in, in my talks because it seems to me that, that the juve, put the juve next to that, then the juve is a light. So in, in that Rex Nettleford quote, that creative imagination, um, or, or just imagination, um, the, all human beings create their world. And the real tragedy is if you have to live in somebody else's world. That is enslavement. So that in a real way, the Caribbean on one level is doomed to be forever enslaved until, until you can articulate your world um, out of your imagination. I mean, and, and you know, Derek Walcott has this very famous quote, um, I, I had no imagination now I had no nation now but the imagination, and that's a quote that comes from the Starple Kingdom. I think it was 1980 poem. Um, and in the poem, he is leaving Trinidad. Well, the guy in the poem, Shabin, is leaving Trinidad and he's going away and so on. And, he, and, and he's, you know, that, 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 that theme of exile that is in so much Caribbean literature from even before Miguel Street. So the imagination is it. The imagination is something that they can't take away from you. They could enslave you. They could put you in a jail. They could whatever. The so, that, so that freedom then is not a concept or something that somebody could give you or anything. Freedom is something you always have. Yes? Externally, they could tie your hand or they could put you in jail, whichever way you see it. But in there, you're still free. You, because freedom is not, no, no, you are born free, nobody could take it away from you. And, and in a way, the juve shows you that. The juve, the juve when you stand, if, if, if you're able to recognize the moment, and all, there's all the immediate noise in the foreground, and there's the paint and all that stuff, where gender and race and everything disappears, but then there's the background. And we never check the background, but the background never changes. Northern range, you're coming, you're coming into the savannah, 
Northern Range doesn't go anywhere. The bands change every year. If you think, think they change this, they change the route, they change the route. The Northern Range is always just there watching and smiling. So with, that in, with that in mind, how do people treat with the idea when, when you broach it to them that liberation can actually come from within? How do people treat with that in, in this space? Um, how do they treat with it? If people like to hear things like that and they say yes, yes, yes. I don't think they treat with it at all. I think, I think, um, I think everything is external for most people. Um, and, and the dominance of this externality is so rigid and strong. I mean, I, I despair when I confront university students now because they just want a job. You know, and I'm saying, well, what? I mean, you go through all of this to come and work for somebody? I don't understand. And what, and what do you perceive work to be? What does working mean? I mean? Personally, I don't like this word. I mean, the word should be play, you know. And, 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 and what is very distressing at, at some time, sometimes, is the fact that in the Trinidadian context, particularly Trinidadian context of understanding the word, or the world, the word play is so central. Play a mass, what he playing boy, yeah, you know. So that we think that that is jokey or that's joke, but that is fundamental to a worldview of liberation. That notion of play, you know. And it is so central to our being and, and at the same time so um, not recognized or not seen, you know. That, 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 you know, the guy is playing prime minister. He's playing prime minister. That, that is it. And as an actor, you understand what that means. And as an actor, you understand that serious business. That's very serious business. I come in front of you at the Little Carib and um, I'm trying to convince you that I'm Hamlet. And you know that I'm not Hamlet. You know who I am. I'm Michael Sherry or whoever, yes? But I'm trying to convince you that I'm Hamlet so that you have accepted that I am lying. Yes, you understand that I'm lying. You understand there's a fundamental lie. He is Michael Sherry, but he's convincing me he's the Prince of Denmark. And then you come out and say he did it very well. He really convinced me he's the Prince of Denmark, which means, which calls into question this business of lying. What does that mean? But fundamental to it is play. But speaking about Hamlet, I'm wondering what is the role of the the fool in this way, the fool. where other people the fool. might not be able to get through and do something. <laughs> the fool, the fool, the fool is very important because um, the fundamental existence that 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 we claim we understand and we we claim is so important, you know, with all our air-conditioned cars and so on, licking up the ozone layer, is an illusion. In other words. Every notion that you have of anything out there is an impression of what is there. We don't know what is there. Yes? So the fool, the, the fool, if you want in Shakespearean terms, is simply functioning in a way as to make that clear to you. I think it was Blake who said that the, the fool will go on, and something like the fool will go on and on and on until he realizes. And, and, and that is really everybody. That is very, every, really everybody. In, in juve terms, in juve terms, you know it's an illusion because, first to begin, let us say you're doing a juve painted in mud or whatever, right? Immediately as everybody is covered in mud, gender disappears, race disappears, yes? You don't, you don't, all you, all you get, all that happens in interaction is, is energies. And, 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 um, and at that point, there's no other. We are all, we are all one, that old cliche, yes? Um, and at the same time, it's as if the, 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 the background is stationary, right? There, there's, a, there's, in all the noise, there's an incredible silence. And you realize everything that you stand for, everything that you've been fighting for, is a waste of time. Everything. It's, it's a humbling, I suppose humbling, even though I don't, the word humble, I don't fully understand what it means. But it's, it's that, it's, you're forced to just stand up. I mean, there's so many juves that, that because some juves I miss it, there's so many juves, I just, I'm just forced to stand up and say, boy, wow. Ooh, there's nothing to say, there's nothing to, ding, licky, ding, licky, ding. and it's wonderful because there's all this noise and movement and, and you can see people having all these different objectives. And there's this, 
it's like a hummingbird in suspension as GB would say you know um, and therefore in all of that you see that we are all fools and we are fooled by this frontal lobe activity that we call thinking and ambition and, and, and purpose and reason and logic and all of it flies out the window you know so that so that the juvenile moment is is it's amazing of course because you could go to all kinds of other ways of seeing that use the word awakening yeah and i was i was forced to recognize all of that once when i was talking somewhere and somebody said but this is just like buddhism or this is just like i said oh, okay so i went and read up a little bit about what buddhism i don't claim to know what it is but i re i recognize some of the words but rasta for instance if you take rasta Rasta has some kind of Buddhistic qualities as well. So I am preoccupied with really how we have framed our experience in the Caribbean to try to create a way to live, a way to see the world. And, and there's, to me there's, strong, there's a strong, what I'm talking about relates to Rasta in some way. Um, the pan movement or the pan as a, as, a, as, a, as a dynamic of liberation, for instance, is very close to, I think it's the closest thing we have to Rasta in a sense. How do we frame our conversations so, or or situations so that we have new conversations? And I and I, I do that in I, I ask that question in the context of a character like Miss Miles, which is a new traditional character. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know what was behind that the, the bringing Miss Miles on the road as no. a carnival band. I felt that um, first to begin is the, how I think mass works. That mass is this. This space that, that we can enter, and, and to, to enter this space, you have to cover yourself completely, whether it's completely with mud or with a mask, as in the case of Miss Myers, so that you disappeared, right? You disappear. And if you cover yourself completely with Miss Miles, then Miss Miles has the possibility of transforming you, even if it's just for the period in which you're covered, transforming you and dealing with your corrupted self, right? So this is a mask that is not so much, maybe when you do that and you dance, and you dance it or whatever, as Naria Pru, the famous traditional mask man says, mass is dance and fight. So that band, you were sort of um, nin ninjas against corruption, the, the way Peter Ninchel designed the costume. Maybe when you dance it and you, and you dance whatever you're doing, maybe, an audience on the street would get the sense of this this internal battle with the corrupted self but the person playing the mass is dissolving is dissolving the corrupted self and, and i tested it because there were people coming to play the mass and the mass was different it was all black it was face covered no one would see it, it was like a beautiful mass though i thought it had some strong aesthetic elements they said, no, 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 we want to play Miss Miles. Men were saying that. And I wanted the mask to be in such a way that it's, it's, there's a kind of androgyny in a sense, right? A man is playing a woman, but it's not cross-dressing, it's not homo, it's not none of those things. It is, I want the Miss Miles energy to inhabit me, for me to confront um, my corrupted self first, and then, you know, institutionalized corruption. And people said, we want to, they didn't, they didn't say all of that. That's how I described it. But they say, we want to play Miss Miles. We have come here to play Miss Miles. Big hard back men putting on the boobs and things that Peter designed. And, and, and I understood something about mass. How, how, how mass allows you to cross borders, to, 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 to dissolve barriers, uh, but also to negotiate ourselves, to, to negotiate, ultimately to dissolve the, the, the superficial self that you think is so important, that you invest in so heavily, and that, that you're trying to become and all that. That mass has that ability. So that is a liberation. That mass has gone in the opposite direction, right? Everybody wants to look pretty and sequins and be, they want to show their boobs and all of that. But, but, but the, another part of mass is the exhaustion, you know? So they have on all this makeup and they have fancy high heel shoes and all these beads and so on. But by seven o'clock on Tuesday night, uh, everything going through and you get back right back to that self that you would have had to deal with if you were completely covered up. So mass gets you every time. Mass is like the kink in black people here. You can't get rid of it, <laughs> you know? Um, so 
the mass becomes one of those very important elements of liberation, or it is one of those very important elements of liberation, if you invest in it. I mean, liberation is a funny word, right? Emancipation, all freedom, all those words are loaded. But once you play mass, a real mass, and you're going to ask me, what is a real mass? I don't, I don't want to get into that because you get, you get dogmatic and fascist and say this is not mass and that is mass. And I don't get involved in those conversations. But a mass, and, and, and to understand it, I think you have to go back to the African masquerade from which it comes. And the African masquerade is such a complex institution. It was really an institution of the status quo in, in the, in the um, Yoruba cosmology of um, pre, pre-slavery, pre-emancipation days. And it has become the mass in Trinidad or in the Caribbean, which is, which is a, a revolutionary form, which is a, 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 the exact opposite of the status quo, which, I, which to me is interesting. But the other thing that is important about this, and as you ask about people here, is that once you get to 1962 in our history and you start to talk about independence and a national agenda, you have problems because you have all these forms that are protest forms or you have all these forms that are structured in such a way to undermine the status quo and you cannot then turn and make them status quo on some kind of national culture that that that, that phrase national culture is is diabolic you know it, it's dangerous when some of those things supported by national systems you know even though we see resources being you have cut. to you have to ask why you have to ask why are those why would the pan movement be supported by the government you have to ask why if you're an artist anybody who gives you an award you have to ask why are they giving you this award because fundamentally if you if you if you if you into the groove of 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 creating art or, or allowing art to come through you, you are challenging everything. So that anybody, any agency come and they say, we will give you so much money to do your work. You have to say, oh, what, what, is, what, is, what is behind this? Because the art, doing the art itself is a complete liberation. That's what it's about. Very few artists get there because they then play games with the society and, and, and recognition and accolades and all that. So you have to ask that question. In, in Trinidad and Tobago, what has happened to Calypso has happened because of government patronage. Um, Calypso gets more money now than it has ever had. These few years, right, than it has ever had in its history. And it's, it is at its weakest in terms of its ability to articulate what is happening in the society and cause some kind of pressure as, as part of a resistance, part of a liberation. And that is because um, of, of government patronage. Isn't part of that because the role of the Calypsonian has changed as well? And I say that no, they have, they, no they, 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 they have changed the role of the Calypsonian. The role of the Calypsonian hasn't changed. They have changed the role of the Calypsonian through money. Yeah. And, that, that, and that's the point. That, that was the point. If if you and if 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 the British overlords are removed, right? Who are you going to resist against, right? The point is the British overlords are removed. You have local politicians and so on in place, but the local politicians are agents of foreigners. Yes, but you don't know who the foreigners are. Who are pulling the strings? So the local politicians become the people to whom you have to rail against. So they throw money at you and quiet you. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's very simple. And that is the thought that we end this conversation on. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we leave with that trick. We leave with that nonsense. But thank you very much. This has been Conversations. I'm DK Roster. Yes. Yeah.